Hello there. Now today we're back at the desk, not standing for the intro because we will be taking a look at every single Lego release in April and I've actually fixed up my screen. So as you can see, I'm not covering any of the images today. You can actually see all of them on the right hand side, which usually is quite a big problem. So let's get straight into looking at all of the new sets. Now we start off with a few Mario sets, which is nice to see that they're continuing with the mario theme of course we know recently we've just got announced from lego that there will be mario kart sets next year so chances are they'll be in the same scale however it's not yet certain i'm sure months before these lego sets go out they could definitely squeeze in a few minifigures instead of these interactive characters i mean they've already got mario luigi and peach in play sets so i guess they could retire them and give them out with carts a bit cheaper for anyone that hasn't picked them up but i don't really see them working too well with the play scout of things the way these are played is you get your interactive figure let's say this trooper is the interactive figure you then scan the qrs on different tiles and if you've got a mario kart which is sizably bigger than an interactive figure I don't really see how that's going to play unless they do it like Bowser's car and it's just another accessory that maybe has a few different QR codes with it. But nonetheless, right now we have the Bowser Express train, which does look really cool. I mean, it's a Lego train. What isn't there to like? I would like to know if this works on the usual tracks for trains because it does have the usual wheels that you see the trains have in. So it'd be really interesting to see if this does come with tracks. And I'm not sure LEGO are currently selling a train track bundle. I know they used to sell just the track as separate. I'm not sure if they're selling that at the minute. They really need to be because we've got Hogwarts Express that's probably still on sale. We've now got Bowser's trains. And unless you're picking up a city set with a train in, which are considerably more expensive than just a bonus pack with trains, it's going to cost a lot to be able to drive this around like a train and not just display it somewhere on a shelf or drive it loosely around perhaps. One thing I will say is they've copied my idea for the Hogwarts Express. If you haven't seen it already, I use a few of the white cloud pieces to represent the steam and they have used light grey here. They were definitely designing this before I even thought of that method, but it's really nice to see Lego using a few pieces again, as usual, out of their comfort zone. We also have King Boo's Haunted Mansion, not to be confused with Luigi's Haunted Mansion, which is a previous set that we've got, and I think it even came with a variant of King Boo. But we've got King Boo's Mansion, again, this wave really doesn't interest me, but something that is interesting is peach's castle now we've got battle with roy at peach's castle but peach is not the one battling it's actually toad who has recently been released in toad's workshop which came with toad and an abbot that only come out a few months ago i think that was in the january wave but we already have toad and we've got peach's castle without peach this would have been a great opportunity to whack peach in i know peach is currently in one of the three starter courses but it definitely would have been nice to get Peach with her castle. It's a bit odd they've released it without, but it's making people want that other set. Now, to get to some more interesting sets here, we'll start off with Dungeons & Dragons because there is an illegal technique in this set. We'll take a closer look at it so you can see what I mean because it's actually to do with the minifigures of this set. If you take a look at this wizard i'm not sure about the characters we will be taking a closer look at the set in a minute but it's not all the time lego release an illegal technique in a set it's this minifigure here if i can zoom in it doesn't let me zoom but i'll zoom in while i edit this you can see that there is a translucent one by one stud on a translucent bar and not only that there's then this crystal piece on the top which i guess isn't directly connected to the bar but we do have a translucent bar with a translucent stud. This is the biggest illegal technique LEGO have ever included in a set. If you didn't know, I've done a video on it mentioning it, so I'll leave that tagged on screen now. But LEGO translucent pieces aren't meant to be connected to each other. Even when I'm storing some of my bricks and pieces, I'll separate some of the bricks by another different colored bricks because the plastic they use just doesn't rub itself too good. And over time, if you keep attaching them, detaching them, they break down and especially looking at bricks are a bit more excused when it comes to Lego because obviously for a lot of windows you've got to put different trans bricks so it doesn't hurt them too much but it's mainly this bar element with the stud yet they've actually included it in probably their biggest Lego set in this wave 
don't get me wrong, the minifigures are great. I really love this eye guy and will have to make a custom one of this at some point. In fact, I'll probably even make a Dungeons and Dragons at home mock because this does look really cool. I've never played Dungeons and Dragons, so I am out of my depth in talking about it. But that doesn't mean I won't show off this amazing build because, like I said, when this got announced, we got so many other sets that go well with it. If you want to know that, check out my recent leaks video. But from the massive red dragon, it's more of an orangey red than an actual red. But it does look really cool. I mentioned in my dragon review with a red dragon that it should have been red and is green. It's actually the other way around. This should have been a green dragon. Well, the original idea had a green dragon. It doesn't mean it should have been a green dragon. But they used a green dragon. They switched it to red. And red just is a more dragon colour, I guess. But we have a bunch of minifigures. Not only some characters, which you will have seen in the close-up when I was complaining about the two pieces that Lego may or may not rule against. But there's also some NPCs like, of course, the dragon, which is some sort of boss, perhaps. You've got this tavern owner down here. You've got a few creatures dotted around the island, which is really cool that they've separated this whole border with this dark blue to represent sort of a secluded area, as you normally get in some of this storytelling. But the minifigures actually come with separate heads and one of them comes with a new hairpiece to swap out the male heads for female, female heads for male and they all have two faces on. It's similar to this character that I got in a Firestar bundle. As you can see there is a female head on one side and a male head on the other side. So that's really cool for Lego to actually include I don't think we've seen anything quite like this. The closest that it comes is the Spider-Man No Way Home set where you got the three Spider-Men with their alternate faces with the hood pulled down, which was really cool to get. They didn't quite look like the characters. I think this is going to be a bit more popular of a choice based on the fact that they're just creating their own characters. There's a few really cool pieces. But again, we'll look back to the minifigures in a second because this whole build is quite compact. It's not as big as something like the Lion's Knight Castle, which again does fold out as well, and that is definitely something on a shelf, but there's a fully fledged interior here, and you can see there's a tavern, you've got a bit of the castle, you've got a bridge, you've got a little forest area, you've also got this little gorge under the bridge with these little mushroom sprites, which do look really funny. But we've also got the flags of the typical castle, which are yellow on top of blue. I made the mistake of putting blue on top of yellow and got into a whole lot of trouble with Lego because you all know the flag. But as you saw, the interior does look just as cool as the exterior. You've got multiple layers. There's a winding staircase, which if you don't know, is used in a few Harry Potter sets. You don't see it too often. They're sort of pieces that aren't too Lego-like. I would have liked them to have built this with some sort of wedge pieces, but Perhaps that would have taken away from the piece count. We've even got this cave design which sticks out from the build. It will make it a bit harder to stick flush against the wall. But not many Lego designs recently you can do that too. So if you are a fan of D&D this is going to be a great set. If you aren't a fan of D&D and want to add to your castle build. It's still going to be a great set. It seems to be modular in the fact that you can swap a few pieces around. You can see there is a Technic pin there. There's a few at the bottom. So I wonder if you can display these separate or this is just to break apart for different storylines you may follow. The tavern's decently sized and as I said there's a bunch of hidden things. There's even a little trap dot here which if you put the key down you can then slide out. So it sort of needs the key to open the hidden trap door which I think is great. And once again the minifigures. There seems to be a few different recolored pieces like this head is from the video line and they've used it for a tavern owner dragon which looks quite cool a lot smaller than the other one but it is a green dragon so technically there is a green dragon in the set which is pretty cool you've also got the return of a few different armor bits and there is a few exclusive head pieces and i'm sure there's probably a few new hair pieces as well but i definitely want to recreate this character but that is not the only giant lego set coming out in april because that is 315 pound and as you see Batman's £260. This is definitely something for people that have a lot of money to splash and for the hardcore collectors that have been saving up from all the dodgy Batman sets from last year. Which, have they made up from it? In my opinion, no, because a lot of people will be buying the cheap sets and last year was terrible for DC. We got Batman and Joker car, Batman and Joker plane, Batman and Joker boat, 
And that was basically it. I think we even got a Batman and Catwoman's bike pack, which people's feelings about the bikes aren't mixed enough, let alone whacking that with the only other character that isn't Batman and Joker. But Lego and DC have gone all out for this. There's a bunch of hidden bits. You can see that not only is there a hidden Batcave, but you've also got the grave of Bruce Wayne's parents. I'm assuming that's what these two tiles represent. And it does seem that they have put a lot of effort into this to get it looking like the animated show and to get a few different scenes and references. Again, I haven't watched the animated show, but you can see that there is just so much that can be pulled out. You can get to the prison, you can get to, it looks like Poison Ivy has a greenhouse you can get behind, as I said, Wayne Manor. You've got the police department, there's even a Batmobile you can pull out. And the Batman text on top is really, really cool. I like the way that they've whacked that. And it comes out from the frame. So you don't just have a bunch of squares on your wall if you have some of the other art sets. But the minifigures, they definitely could have included somewhere to whack them. Perhaps you can pin them on the background somewhere. But they do seem like they're not going to be able to clip on top because of the way it's built out. Definitely should have needed a bracket or something on top. But the minifigures do look cool. I mean, Joker and Harley are a bit updated. Same with Catwoman and Batman, even. They all look a little updated. It's the same display as the Batwing, I think it was. But it does look really cool. Will I be spending £300, £260 on it? Absolutely not. But then again, if this was a Star Wars layout, would I still probably wouldn't spend on it. But I'd be a lot more tempted to. So definitely fans of the animated show. I don't think we've got any animated show Lego sets before, so this is definitely cool. Probably going to be a one-off, especially at this price. I don't want to see what this is like in a few years after it retires. It's going to skyrocket to that £500 mark so quickly. I don't really see it being much more expensive than that, but again, it's for a different audience. So if you like either of them, they will be available April 1st. I think Dungeons & Dragons is available April 4th for people who aren't insiders. But inside it's a free, so you might as well sign up. We also have two key rings and a bunch of Duplo sets, which if you're interested in, it's good that we got Peppa Pig. There will be a bunch of kids that this will be how they get into Lego, but I'm more interested in this space science lab. This is probably the only one I'd pick up out of the April wave. It's not been a great wave. I've not expected it to have been great. They've got a load of niches out. We've got some buildable figures that are coming up which aren't too popular. We've got an expensive art set. We've got a new Dungeons & Dragons set which keeps the hype going around LEGO for April. They are really, really good at that. Releasing a set that's completely different to what they've currently got and getting a bunch more people interested in LEGO when it's a time that there's not normally any exciting LEGO releases. As I said, this is the only set that I've really looked at and gone. That's something I could possibly pick up. The rest I am definitely not picking up at any point soon but i do want to point out the vehicle for this lab because it reminds me so much of the poly bag which is behind me in the lego city but they've made it wheelchair accessible which is really interesting they've taken the same design my fiance pointed out that the slopes here on the front are actually flipped to what they are in the poly bag which i would never have noticed but it does look really cool they've taken the design the poly bag if you want that set is still the poly bag this isn't a replacement likewise that isn't a replacement of this you could probably modify it if you had your own pieces but again the wheelchair piece isn't too common especially in this color it might be a new piece so you'd really have to pick up this set for it that come with a blue astronaut this is coming with a green one and overall the city space line even the friend space line which we do have a new set of which is just at the bottom down here is really cool not only is it a great color theme which i am not a fan of orange i really don't like the color orange i'm warming up to it recently but for some reason i just really don't like the color orange but the combination of the orange and purple with the white is a really nice color combination that makes it stand out from anything else even c has the white orange and the sand blue mixed in which is really cool and that does beg the question them purple crystals that they're mining for the batteries, are they also turning it into the glass for their ships or is that completely unrelated? The flowers here, if I scroll up so you can get a better image, are really cool and they also use a recolored space monster from the first wave. We got the green ones. In Friends, they've now turned blue and started coming out of plants. And as you probably noticed in the city space theme, we've also got this miniature alien that's been suited up and... 
are they teaming with the aliens? Are the aliens helping them find these crystals that power their labs, power their machines? It's an interesting story. I can't wait to see what else comes out this year. And it's sort of the next Lego space theme. I mean, we go through space themes like there honestly is no tomorrow. And for Lego space themes, there might not ever be a tomorrow because they'll just cancel it and a few years down the line, bring out a new one. But they always hit the now on the head when it comes to space. It's just like a guaranteed win for a Lego set. We've got a giant Lamborghini Huracan Technica in the colour orange. Not a fan of the Technic sets, but it's nice to see. Again, that little niche has been fed so they can fill May's release date with Star Wars. Maybe some Harry Potter, some more Star Wars. Maybe get a few sets out for some regular city sets. And more importantly, some more Star Wars sets. Make sure you stick around for the mate releases. I cannot wait to see what is coming out in May. But to wrap up this video, we've got Iron Man and Green Goblin construction figures. I will say they are much, much better than they used to be. I didn't like the more bionicle construction figures, which is quite shocking because a lot of people didn't really like them. I didn't have too much of a problem with them. I didn't dislike them that much. But they just weren't interesting to me. I'd rather collect the minifigures or even the brick heads, which Lego are doing amazing with at the minute. But they've taken away that bionicle aspect of it. There's still a few pieces which are definitely bionicle, like the faces and the shoulder pads. And even the joints for the arms and the legs, I'm sure, use the giant oversized ball joints. But they've built a lot, a lot more of it out of Lego, which is the correct way to go. It's similar to the mechs. It's actually reminding me now of the Power Miners mech, which I have rebuilt on this channel and reviewed. Because that uses the giant ball joints and is a bit chunkier than the mechs we get now. So it's basically just a giant mech that's more of an action figure than a minifigure accessory. But that is all for April. I don't think I'll be picking any of this up as it really doesn't interest me that much. But as I said, if you're a fan of the construction figures, if you're a fan of perhaps you just want a little fill in the city space sets. I wonder if City and Friends are going to take a break and this is going to be the last space set we get until sort of June time when we get a lot more of the sets. If you like Mario, if you like your big Technic cars, if you like Dungeons and Dragons and you're new here, first off, welcome to Lego. It's an expensive hobby. And you can definitely tell that by the Batman set. But it's nice that Lego have put these little bits out before they get into the juicy, juicy Star Wars sets. Again, I can't wait to see what's to come for Star Wars. And we've also got all the gift with purchases in May. I think in, in April there are a few gift with purchases. If you do want to check out the gift with purchases, head over to Lego right now. They will be up. But there's nothing too special I think we can expect in April. Of course, we've got the giant Mimic chest for the D&D set. But that is exclusively with people picking up the D&D set while stocks last. So I think that will go in a few days. And I honestly am so excited for the May release. Even though I'm not picking up any of these sets, I'll definitely be picking up a few in May. So stick around. Be sure to like this video if you want to see more releases when they are out. And subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. May the bricks be with you. Always.